a very good evening. You're watching the 7 o'clock news live from Bahrain International with me, Danielle Deporto. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah El Sisi, marking the Egyptian national football team's qualifying for the 2018 Russia World Cup. His Majesty noted with appreciation the team's World Cup qualifying performance and wished them success in the World Cup finals. The Egyptian team beat the Congolese team in a match played at Alexandria's Burj Al Arab Stadium. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi, marking the Egyptian national football team's qualifying for the 2018 Russia World Cup. His Royal Highness expressed his appreciation of the team's outstanding performance, wishing them success in the World Cup finals. He also sent a similar cable to Egyptian Prime Minister Sharif Ismail. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gudibia Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Their Royal Highnesses discussed initiatives to enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of government work and adapt to current economic challenges and opportunities to meet the needs of citizens. They stressed the importance of supporting all national efforts that develop government services to achieve the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Their Royal Highnesses reviewed government programs that aim to enhance industrial development to increase its contribution to the national economy. In addition to strategies to strengthen Bahrain's investment environment to attract more domestic and foreign investors, as well as other means of progressing sustainable development.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet session today at Gudibia Palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa. His Royal Highness hailed His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa al Khalifa's speech at the inauguration ceremony of the fourth session of the fourth legislative term of the Representatives and Shura Councils for the directives it included on enhancing the Development March and Economic March to meet the needs and aspirations of citizens. He affirmed the government's keenness to implement the directives, instructing the creation of practical plans to achieve them, especially those related to the economy. He reiterated the importance of developing collaboration with the representatives and Shura councils and supporting the development of the national legislative system. The Prime Minister com commended the results of His Majesty's visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the talks he held with the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud of Saudi Arabia in Jeddah, asserting that the visit enhances the historic relations between the two countries and builds upon established cooperation and coordination to ensure stability and security. The cabinet praised the results of the custodian of the two holy mosques visit to Russia, describing it as historic and stressing that the results are reflected on all Gulf countries, not only on Saudi Arabia. The cabinet expressed condolences to the US people and the families of the victims of the Las Vegas shooting. His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to expedite the development of the Citra Central Market to meet the needs of citizens. The Prime Minister noted the importance of establishing principles of cooperation and deeper working relationships between government bodies related to the Jafri Awakov and heads of Matam and Hassaniyas to maintain and enhance the organization of religious occasions. The Cabinet reviewed the preliminary steps to implement the health insurance system and approved a plan proposed by the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Health to develop the quality of health services and foster competitiveness between health institutions to ensure maximum benefit from resources in the public health sector. The Cabinet reviewed and referred the draft law of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs concerning amendments to the provisions of the Criminal Procedures Code to 1. regulate the use of modern technology and the employment of witness protection, 2. impose legal guarantees regarding precautionary measures against persons, 3. prevent the escape of accusees, and 4. increase the effectiveness of sentences to achieve justice and protect society. The Cabinet reviewed the, the recommendation of the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs to renew the agreement between Bahrain and UNESCO concerning the Arab Regional Centre for World Heritage. The Cabinet referred to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs a draft agreement for the promotion, protection and guarantee of investments among the Organisation of Islamic Conferences member states. The Cabinet approved a draft resolution on the specification of development projects exempted from customs fees. The Cabinet referred a Memorandum of Understanding between Bahrain's Education Ministry and Mohammed V University of Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The Cabinet approved a draft law amending Article 167 of Decree by Law 54-2002 concerning the Representatives Council. The Cabinet also referred to the Representatives Council a draft law to amend Article 130 of the Council's Rules of Procedures. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi on Egypt's national football teams qualifying for the 2018 Russia World Cup. His Royal Highness expressed his appreciation of the Egyptian team's performance, wishing them success in the World Cup finals. His Royal Highness also sent a similar cable to Egyptian Prime Minister Sharif Ismail on this occasion. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi on Egypt's national football teams qualifying for the 2018 Russia World Cup. His Highness expressed his appreciation of the Egyptian team's outstanding performance, praising the efforts of the administrative and technical bodies of the team. He wished both the Egyptian and Saudi teams success in the World Cup finals. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, has deputized Deputy Premier, His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to inaugurate the fourth Middle East Process Engineering Conference and Exhibition, MEPEC 2017, held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. MEPEC 2017 is organized by the Middle East Energy Events in collaboration with the National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA. The Deputy Premier conveyed greetings from His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the event organizers, along with his appreciation of the efforts they are exerting to ensure its success 
and prove anew the kingdom's progress in the exhibitions and conferences industry. His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa confirmed the Prime Minister's unwavering support for the exhibitions and conferences sector, given its role in boosting the kingdom's economic status. The Deputy Premier asserted that MEPEC, which has been patronised and supported by His Royal Highness the Premier ever since it first began in 2011, has become a major international platform where knowledge, opinions and expertise in the fields of oil and gas are exchanged amongst experts and specialists from many national, regional and world oil companies. His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa toured the exhibition and expressed admiration for the showcase products, which are related to the latest in oil and gas and petrochemicals advancements. He lauded the outstanding organisation of the exhibition, stressing that its distinguished status has attracted mega world and regional companies to it. The Deputy Premier affirmed that the oil industry sector is making quantum leaps thanks to the constant support of the leadership. He extended sincere thanks and appreciation to MEPEC 2017 organisers and participants, wishing them further success. Themed sustainable growth through process innovation and downstream integration, MEPEC 2017 hosts more than 200 exhibiting companies on a total area of 8,000 square metres, more than 5,000 visitors representing 250 com companies and institutions from 35 countries are expected to attend the event. The Commander-in-Chief of Bahrain Defence Force, the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received today the Kuwaiti Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Hazem bin Mubarak Al Sabah, who is accompanied by the outgoing military attaché at Kuwait's embassy in Bahrain, Major General Ali Suleiman Al As Askar. The meeting was held in the presence of BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sakh Al Naimi. The BDF Commander-in-Chief expressed thanks and appreciation for the efforts made by the military attaché during his work in Bahrain which contributed to boosting fraternal relations of cooperation between the two brotherly countries. He lauded growing bilateral cooperation, mainly in the military field, wishing Major General Ali Suleiman al Askar success in his future military duties. The meeting was attended by General Command Court Director Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, Inspector General Major General Abdullah Hassan al Naimi, and Assistant Chief of Staff for Supply and Catering Rear Admiral Yusuf Ahmed Malala.
The Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited today the Royal Field Engineering Unit, accompanied by the Royal Guard Special Force Commander, His Highness Major Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and a number of senior Royal Guard officers. The commander of the unit and a number of senior officials received the visitors. The Royal Guard Commander was briefed on the development of preparation programs and military training in the unit. His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the officers for their noble sacrifice while fighting amongst the Arab coalition forces to support legitimacy in Yemen led by the Saudi armed forces. His Highness thanked them for their high military professionalism during their participation with the Bahrain Defense Forces in Yemen. His Highness highlighted the appreciation of the Arab coalition forces led by Saudi Arabia for the BDF officers' efforts stating that this appreciation is a result of the officers' high combat efforts through performing their national duties, which are an implementation of the directives of His Majesty and the follow-up of the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, inaugurated the second CCPS Middle East Process Safety Conference on the sidelines of the fourth Middle East Process Engineering Conference and Exhibition, MEPEC, at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center, organized by Middle East Energy Events and the American Institute of Chemical Engineers in collaboration with the National Oil and Gas Authority, NOGA, under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The event was attended by a number of NOGA officials and a number of specialists in the field of chemical process safety from prominent local Gulf and global oil and industrial companies, as well as many experts from many sectors in Bahrain, the GCC and around the world, to discuss the critical nature of operational safety and infrastructure and exchange information and expertise in the fields of safety of chemical processes and engineering practices. Sheikh Mohammed expressed thanks and appreciation to the organizers for organizing the event, hailing the positive results of the first conference and exhibition. He expressed pleasure in choosing Bahrain as the host, which is the result of Bahrain's good reputation in the conferences and exhibitions industry and the government's support to attract events to the kingdom as MEPEC has become a major international platform where knowledge, opinions and expertise in the fields of oil and gas are exchanged amongst experts and specialists from many national, regional and world oil companies. MEPEC uh, is being organized uh, for the fourth time here in Bahrain. Now it's uh, focused on process engineering, which is quite a wide uh, sector covering oil, petrochemicals, other industries including the aluminum here in Bahrain and other chemical processes. Uh, many events have over the years been developed, uh, other than the technical program, which is extremely uh, rich in its content. MEPEC conference is a conference that draws people together who invest in large capital plants, whether it's petrochemicals or oil, and they add value to those products, and they ship those products to the various markets, both within the region and globally. So MEPEC is important because the Middle East in particular is going through a process of adding value to what it has always had, oil and gas. So we're adding value to raw materials. This process is the natural evolution of our industry and it will continue as long as we consume oil and gas. A very good grounds uh, for all these professionals in this field to get together, exchange ideas, exchange uh, uh, experiences, and at the same time it, it, it boosts the relationships uh, between all the companies that are uh, in, in this field. And of course for us in Yasser here, uh, we blend with the others. Uh, we, we try as much as we can to improve the communication, the exchange of uh, uh, information and, uh, and introducing new technologies and new uh, eras for, for this field, uh, especially in the refining business, uh, to the region in the Middle East. I'm out of Boston, so I came over this week, and we've been coming to this show since it started eight years ago, and it's really a fantastic international event. Um, there's so much innovation and investment going on in the region, and there's so much the world can learn from this region, and the region can learn from the best practices in the rest of the world. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs, the SCIA, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, participated in the 18th International Contest of the Holy Quran, which was concluded in the Russian Federation's capital, Moscow. 
In his speech on behalf of His Majesty the King, Sheikh Abdurrahman conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King to all attendees, wishing them success and affirming His Majesty's appreciation of the naming of this event after him, which is a source of pride for Bahrain and its people. He expressed the kingdom's tremendous pride in its deep-rooted friendship with the Russian Federation. The event was organized by the Russian Council of Muftis and attended by representatives of President Vladimir Putin's federal administration, local authorities of the Russian Federation, members of the Federal National Assembly, the Duma, ambassadors, members of the diplomatic corps, business persons, artists, dignitaries, public opinion leaders, imams and orators from the religious departments in various Russian cities, regions and districts, as well as 500 VIPs amongst the 6,000 attendees from 32 countries. Bahrain yesterday welcomed the Red Arrows team, who continued to impress crowds with their displays of speed, agility and teamwork. More in this report with Yasmin Ibrahim. Thousands of people enjoyed a dazzling acrobatic aerial display in the kingdom sky by Britain's famous Red Arrows. The team with its nine distinctive red jets performed a series of formations and dynamic loops and rolls from 4 p.m. in front of the Ritz-Carlton. Well, the, the Red Arrows are uh, an extraordinary, uh, extraordinarily powerful and, and popular set of informal ambassadors for the United Kingdom. Um, it's, it's, a good it's a good way to, 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 to point out how important our defense relations are, but also they are, they are a testament to British uh, ingenuity and, uh, and engineering prowess, so we love that. But also it's more than that. It's about, it's about fun and it's about uh, innovation uh, and, and ingenuity. Bahrain is like a home for, uh, for, for us. Um, we've had a history here since the 1930s. Arif Maharak is, is a home away from home. Uh, we have such a strong affinity to Bahrain and to the people of Bahrain. 201 years now uh, of, uh, of close association, so we're so pleased we could bring the full display back this year after just doing the, the fly past last. The display in Bahrain forms part of a five-week tour of the Middle East by the Red Arrows following a historic fly past last November. This year, rather than just a fly past, we thought we'd come back and really celebrate the ties between the two countries, both in industry and in military, and also across all the spectrums of science, technology, engineering and mathematics, so across all of the educational aspects as well. So it's brilliant to come back and just build on what we developed last year. The display, I found, A, I'm very proud that it was a British thing, and the ties with Bahrain and Britain are well known. You know, we, we've, we've loved Bahrain for years, and hopefully Bahrain still loves us back. So um, there is that connection. So having it here in Bahrain was very special. The much-awaited performance is part of the festivities in honour of the Bahraini British Friendship Society, strengthening the deep historical tie with Britain, dating back more than 200 years. The Red Arrows team wowed thousands of crowds with their dazzling display of air aerobics here in the kingdom. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain carried on its warm reception and hospitality for the Red Arrows team today from a business perspective at a Bahraini British Business Forum event featuring the team, stars of the British community and business people from both sides discussing technology, bilateral trade and new investments. Bilateral trade in both directions is, is on the increase, which is, which is very good, and across a, 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 a huge number of different sectors, which is a, a very good sign. It shows that, uh, that, that, uh, that Bahraini people are, are um, interested in and attuned to, to British goods of, uh, uh, of all sorts. Bahraini exports are also increasing to the UK. Um, investments also going in both directions. Uh, the latest is, is Villa Mama setting up their, their restaurant uh, in, uh, in southwest London, in West London, which is uh, a, another great achievement. Um, but more seriously, we've got, uh, we've got a great deal of, uh, of really interesting and innovative investment projects going on backwards and forwards, in, for example, in the areas of environmental improvements here in Bahrain. Um, uh, Investcor have just uh, uh, bought a, uh, a massive debt management company in the UK, so from one extreme to the other, it's great. It promotes the relationship that we have with Great Britain, which is a relationship so, so uh, old, over 200 years of uh, close formal relationship and you can add another hundred or almost two hundred years of non-formal 
relationship. Oh, this event is great. Uh, to be able to come to Bahrain and display like we did yesterday, um, show the people of Bahrain how much we uh, enjoy being here, the connection with the United Kingdom, uh, that was one thing. But then to come here today and actually meet the people, the businesses here, and help promote the great campaign and those ties is just fantastic. Very excited to be here and obviously events like this because flying is part of what we do, but this is actually bringing it all together. So we represent the Royal Air Force, obviously a very long and distinguished history and very proud to have that link with Bahrain. And so it's quite nice to be celebrating that as well.